Hello and welcome to another video that really is going to get you the top grades. It comes to you from a brilliant viewer, Deck Means, who was sent in his essay, which scored 30 out of 30 in 2019. Rather than type it up, I thought you'd like to see what the handwriting of someone who's got full marks looks like. And in this video, you'll see the typical length of an exam answer. So here it is. I've shrunk it down a bit. We're on the second page. Now we're on the third. And that's it. He's got full marks just on three pages of writing. And you can see he's not cramming writing into the line. During the video, you're going to get to learn what these examiner comments mean here. These are the reason that uh, he's got the marks that he's got. And during the essay, the video, I will also show you the seven skills that examiners are looking for to give you the top marks. So let's start straight in. Hello, sir. After receiving incredible results, taking me from a grade four to a grade eight because of your fantastic educational videos on English literature, I decided to attach my 30 out of 30 in spectacles on Sheila to show my appreciation. Thank you very much, Deck. Uh, I'm very happy for you to use this as an example. So here it is in the video. It is a message, he says to all your viewers, that you provide proven methods of achieving the top marks. Um, well, that's important for you to hear, okay? I want you to know that if you follow the advice in the videos, you can get 30 out of 30. You don't even have to buy my guides. I can't believe I'm saying that. Right, the first thing that you'll notice about Deck is that he has planned an answer. And he's planned it in the question book and then just put a little reminder to the examiner that he's planned it. Now, you don't need to do that. The examiner doesn't mark your plan. The only advantage of having your plan here is so that the examiner can see what you wanted to say if you ran out of time. But planning in your um, on your exam paper itself, not the answer paper, is an excellent way to use your time. You don't have to do it here, although equally you can. So let's see what he's got as his thesis. In the morality play, Priestley uses the construct of Sheila Burling to represent how the current political situation is corrupt. The play being set in 1912 is symbolic of how a patriarchal society can lead to wars and eventual death. Priestley uses Sheila as a proxy of the inspector to put through how capitalism can change and learn valuable lessons which Priestley also wanted to convey to the audience. Now this is quite interesting because the examiner has said okay for Assessment Objective 3, I'm putting that in Level 4. Now, Level 4 means you've only demonstrated clear understanding, which is good, but you still need to be thoughtful and developed to get to Level 5, and to get to Level 6, you need to be convincing and analytical. Now, what's happened here is because the examiner knows that this play is about capitalism, they're looking for a really advanced point about capitalism, and... Deck has actually written his advance point here, but not linked it to capitalism. So he needs to link the patriarchal society to capitalism. How does capitalism help patriarchal society continue and help men to stay in power? Um, what is Priestley's focus when he creates the patriarchal society that he's describing? Obviously, it's attacking men through their capitalist behavior and also showing that the women in the play behave in a capitalist way because they are taught to to do so by the men. Now that then becomes a really sophisticated argument and unfortunately although Deck is thinking on a sophisticated way here the examiner hasn't spotted it because they're just scanning for that word capitalism and Deck hasn't said anything interesting about capitalism here. He's just said the bog standard, um, we're going to change capitalism. He hasn't even mentioned Priestley's socialist views. So the examiner's not giving him credit for what he already knows. And likewise, the idea of the morality play, which is full of Christian language, and the Christian symbolism that Priestley uses in showing the characters as having uh, each of the seven deadly sins, would also help him to discredit capitalism. So there are loads of places that Deck could have gone here to get into the higher mark scheme. 
But the good news is, the examiner's first impression did not stop them giving this full marks. So what comes next must be awesome. Priestley begins with using Sheila as a firm construct for capitalism. Priestley uses pronouns like mummy to evolve how capitalism within Sheila is childlike and innocent. Priestley despised the attitude of capitalism, therefore using childlike imagery. So now we can see how every point is being linked to discrediting capitalism and suddenly the marks are going to go up. Mummy could also foreshadow the babies who cry for their mummy whilst, uh, while soldiers during World War I were dying. That's a bit of a stretch, but get away with it. Sheila, in a way, is similar to this idea that she has been brainwashed by a capitalist society, which leads to her disgusting attitude to the working class. Good. You see how he keeps coming back to what capitalist society is up to. Priestley, during the scene of Sheila forcing her power upon uh, Eva's workplace, is a clear message of how capitalism isn't good for society, and could infer that Sheila's attitudes were the cause of Eva's horrific suicide, which to an audience of 1945 would have felt great hate towards capitalism. Now you can see that Deck under exam pressure is not expressing himself as clearly as he would in a normal essay, but the examiner is trying to give credit for the ideas. Here it's AO2, which is looking at the writer's methods, but the examiner has chickened out of saying at what level AO2 it is. Now, stay tuned for the next paragraph because they're going to commit here to level 5 AO2. Let's have a look. Sheila's change within the play could be, as the inspector arrives, brighter and harder. The stage direction is symbolic of truth and a strong challenge to the capitalist uh, views, much like Croft and Burling. The adjective brighter can have biblical references of God's knowledge and omnipresent being. As Sheila, being the proxy to the inspector, who symbolises Priestley's message, we see how she learns what she has done and how it affects the working class, of whom 80% would have been Christian. Sheila's honesty, I behaved badly too, I know I did, is powerful. So we'll stop there. So you can see now that the examiner's impressed with this um, use of methods, mainly because Deck has zoomed in on individual words in the stage direction and come up with some interpretation of them. Now what's interesting is that we've moved from level 4 to level 5 and now we're going to move to level 6 and this is what is going to determine the overall grade. There's going to be enough level 6 in it to get a full mark. Let's see what he has to say about Sheila. Sheila's honesty, I behave badly too, I know I did, is powerful. The repetition of I implies leadership. She begins to learn her lesson. Her inner socialist pride starts to layer down in her mindset. The repetition of I could symbolise how Eva was alone and needed help, but capitalism uh, cleansed it up. I'm not sure what that says. Chewed it up, sorry, and spat it back in her face. And we can see how Priestley wanted a change during 1912 which would have prevented wars to come. And so it's this use of context here that's actually got the high grade for interpretation. Now this is important because of the word conceptualised in AO1. When you're being conceptualised, you're putting forward an argument. And here Deck is saying that Priestley's got this point of view about the war, and not just the First World War, but also the Second World War which Deck brings out with this idea of wars to come, not just the one war. And so now the examiner's convinced that we're into this conceptualised approach, level six. Sheila is a construct of Priestley. Therefore, the way Sheila changes and learns her lesson is extremely fast, as if I could, keep, if I could help now I would, is the lesson which is learnt. The verb help could infer, means imply by the way, 
how the battle between socialism and capitalism was unjust and they needed a person like Sheila to learn, learn what needs to be done. However, during 1912, the patriarchy was high, women didn't receive much attention, however, the suffragette movement would have been led by people like Sheila, which is a firm way that Priestley wanted change, and by using the character of Sheila, society would change for the better. So you can see what Deck is trying to get at. The examiners said, right, okay, I'm going to treat that as context at level six, because it's using the context of the time, 1912, to Priestley's views in 1945. And let's see what the examiners mean here. Well, they're looking at links between the context and the text. So that's all it is. And you only have to explore it. You don't have to be uh, really convincing and critical all the time at this level. But the examiners decided that deck has been. Now let's just step inside the examiner's mind for a minute. We've got level 6 AO1, uh, that was earlier. Now we've just read level 6 AO3, and we're about to read another level 6 AO1. That's not enough to get um, 30 out of 30, because AO2 is missing. But as we come down, we'll see that there's a level 6 AO2, and that's going to be enough by the time we get to the end to get full mark. Priestley uses the terms of could and would within the construct of Sheila's speech. This is directly referring to the lack of knowledge possessed by capitalists during 1912. The verb could is symbolic of Priestley's message to how the Burlings could have saved Eva. However, they let the superficial mindset blind them. The way Priestley uses Sheila at the start and end is to show how society was destined to change. So that's a really good structural point looking at the start and end of the play. Sheila's now mature and socialist view on life to create helpful change. The verb could perhaps is implying how Sheila could change the future and stop the death of the impoverished like Eva Smith. Priestley wanted the audience to see change within Sheila, therefore he changes her vocabulary from mummy to mother to hold symbolic meaning of how 1912 to 1945 women's roles were enhanced. So the examiners got really excited here because Deck has used this sophisticated analysis about how her language changes from mummy to mother. Now that's not just an analysis within AO1, it's also AO2. Let's see why. It's because Deck is looking at a method. How the language changes over time in the play is a method, and how it is linked to the context as well, um, you know, 1912 to 1945, is also a method. Then we have quite a detailed conclusion. At the end, the second death of Eva demonstrates how World War II still was going to happen, as the lack of knowledge possessed by the Burlings during 1912, their ignorance led to World War II, which represents the second death of Eva. However, Priestley's message was that he wanted Sheila, uh, like people, to change ooh, sorry, our very outlook on life, and using the suffragette movement, the world's morals were changed and the Labour government helped form Priestley's view as a reality and change society for the better. You get the sense here that Deck has really rushed this. It doesn't fully make sense as a result, but look what's happened. There's no AO here. The examiner has simply ignored it. They've said, no, nah, that's not really very good, but they've given credit for each of the things they found in the essay. Now, this is really important because we get a sense that Deck was recently a grade four writer. He's not fully in control of his vocabulary and his sentences, but because he's writing about grade nine ideas, which he's got from my videos, he's able to get a grade eight because ideas are just knowing stuff. You know, even if you can't express them perfectly, you're still going to get credit in the exam. And now one of the things I always have to remind people in my videos and in my classroom is that examiners will disagree. 
So let's look at the seven things they're looking for and see how well they match the essay. So a critical and exploratory, well-structured argument. Now, I would say that was pretty well-structured. Not It wouldn't have been enough for me to give it 30 out of 30 because it's not clearly signposting what he's trying to argue all the way through the essay. It's definitely conceptualised. It's all about Priestley's ideas, isn't it? It keeps coming back to why Priestley is doing this. Are the, judici are the references judicious? Well, that's really easy to find out. The examiner is looking for those embedded quotations, those short quotations like the single word brighter or brighter and harder. Um, when we've got a long quotation like I behave badly too, I knew I did. He doesn't just stop there. He zooms in on the repetition of I. Now that is what judicious means. You pick exactly the information that you need and you make an intelligent point about it. My favourite one of these is this attention to detail about how language changes over time and so how Sheila's use of mummy at the beginning of the play becomes mother at the end to show her growing maturity and growing political perspective. Now the great news about using these single word embedded quotations is this also gets you to point four, this idea of having a fine-grained and insightful analysis of language. Well, you know, if you're writing about these individual words, then that is fine-grained and it's going to be insightful. So that one skill of embedding quotations gives you both of those three and four out of the seven. Now what's great about Dex's essay as well is that he's written about the form and structure. He's written a bit about the idea of the morality play, and I don't think he got credit for that, where perhaps he could have done, but he keeps referring to the changes over time, the structure of the play, and how the structure of the two deaths of Eva represent the recurrence of war in the First World War and the Second World War. So you can see he's definitely focused on the structure of the play and easily got those marks. Has he used subject terminology properly? Well, for me, the answer is nearly. So he's used words like symbolic correctly, referring to directly, symbolizes correctly. Um, he's attempted to use the word construct correctly, but isn't quite right. He's also using infer when he should have said implies. Um, but then he has correctly identified help as a verb, which might have helped the examiner a little bit, but I think they were a little generous there. But that doesn't matter. Remember, examiners disagree. Now, has he explored more than one idea um, with context and interpretations? Yes, he keeps coming back to the idea of the context, um, especially the suffragettes, which the examiner really liked, and also having more than World World War. Most students would only be writing about one world war. Now, what's great about this example is it's far from perfect, and yet you've seen how the examiner in the real exam has given it 30 out of 30 marks. Now, what happens when the examiner gets hold of an essay is they use this column first. Is it convincing? Is it critical? In other words, does it have more than one interpretation? Does it explore ideas? Yes, it does and probably nearly every examiner would agree, then they would argue amongst themselves at what mark to give it, and I would give it a little lower than 30, but that doesn't matter. You know, over all your essays, they're all marked by different examiners, by the way, um, and so you'll get a variety of marks, but as you saw with Deck, he still ended up with a grade 8. And moving from a grade 4, how awesome is that? So hopefully you can see exactly how to get the top marks. Go back over this and test yourself, um, especially those seven ideas that I gave you at the beginning. See if you can find examples of those in the writing and reproduce it in your own. Thank you very much for subscribing. See you soon on my channel.